Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Arctic Pauper Show. This is your host Arctic Ghost and I'm bringing you a blue black control deck but it's it's kind of like Angler Delver but it's um it's Augur like Angler Augur control basically. I don't really know what I'd call it. Um I think I'd probably just call it blue uh, I think I probably just call it Demir control version 1.0. Uh this is a deck that uh, went 6-0 in the Popper Challenge, but I, I don't think that the player won. Uh, I believe his name is Tarkin Mag. Uh, if I'm pronouncing that wrong, uh, please don't hate me. Uh, it caught my eye because it it looked really cool. I saw it had Demir Signets in it, and I, I personally love Probe. Uh, you know, I like the whole lower to the ground thing instead of the whole Mystical Teachings plan because that deck can be really boring as hell as some people I know. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'm not quite sure what, what he faced and what he didn't face, but I know he's been doing really, really well with blue-black control in general. Uh, he kind of goes, he or she goes back and forth between this list and the Archaeomancer version, but I, I thought this one would be a bit cooler to bring you. Uh, the Archaeomancer version has changed a little bit. Um, some people are trying, you know, different things, so I'll probably bring that to you at another point uh but yeah so this is just a good lower to the ground blue black control deck uh that uses you know gurmag angler to win the game usually it has augur of bolas to get you some extra card advantage of course it plays a couple mole drifters but mole drifters a little expensive it's not exactly what this deck wants this deck really thrives on being able to play cheaper spells as you notice the only two big spells in the deck are like mole drifter and probe you know, not counting the flashback of Forbidden Alchemy or the buyback of Imakar's Justice. So, yeah, that's basically it. Uh, this is his exact 75. I did not change any of the cards. Uh, I played a couple matches with it. It's been pretty fun. And we're going to take it into a couple test matches and see how it goes. First, let's break the deck down piece by piece and see how it works. You got the uh, mana base where you got your basics. You got uh, five swamp and seven islands. You have a few more islands because you play counter spell you play preordain you're going to be playing a few more uh blue spells in the same turn and uh you have no double black spells except for evan Car's justice but you also have a sixth swamp in mortuary mire so there's that you have seven dual lands uh he's playing four dismal back war to gain the life and then three demir aqueduct you don't really want too many lands to come into play tapped in this deck because of the fact that you want to cast so many spells, so do keep that in mind. And then you have the, the typical thing that every, that everybody is doing these days is playing a couple of cycle lands to play effectively a 58 card deck or to uh, be able to cantrip when you return them with an Amir Aqueduct. Looking at the spells, you of course have Preordain, which is better than Ponder because you want to be able to push dead cards to the bottom. Later on, you're not going to need excess lands. You're certainly not, no, not going to need the second signet that you can top deck, so you can always just push that to the bottom. Or you could rearrange your cards in, in the order that you want. Like if you have a Doomblade Echoing Decay, you could put the Echoing Decay on top, and then you can get the Doomblade for next turn. Things like that. Then you have a couple of Disfigure. This card's probably gotten a lot better since um, Aggro has been taking over the format, so I like it personally. Then you have Tragic Slip. Tragic Slip's really good because it's a one mana answer to pretty much anything as long as something dies. I mean, you could throw Augur Bolas to the Wolves and then Tragic Slip can take care of it. You can evoke a Mole Drifter and then Tragic Slip can take care of any creature they have. So that's always a lot of fun. Uh, I'm a big fan of Tragic Slip. Moving on to the two casting cost cards, you have two Demir Signet, which you kind of need help with and allows you to go Probe on turn 4 or Mole Drifter on turn 4, or it allows you to be able to go Augur of Bolas, hold of Counterspell on turn 4, so that's always good. Speaking of Augur of Bolas, you have Augur of Bolas. This card has surprised me. Um, it's a 2 mana 1 3 that blocks really, really well, and it gets you pretty much any powerful card that you may need. You don't play too many creatures, so you shouldn't whiff on it too often, but you can, and when you do it, it's upsetting. It is. It, it makes you feel like you want to die inside, but getting past that, it, it, it's a good card at heart. I think. I'm going to move on now. You have four Counterspell. I really should not have to explain why this is here. You should know. Three Chainer's Edict, because like I always say, it's good to have an Edict effect, and this is the best one. It sucks that sorcery, but, I mean, you can't really argue since you get to flash it back, so there's that. Uh, then you have three Doomblades, because Doomblade is just great. Uh... 
Another thing about Tragic Slip, as I've, I've mentioned, is it does kill Gurmag Angler, where Doomblade does not. Uh, that is the drawback of Doomblade in this... That is the only drawback of Doomblade in this format, really, is that it does not kill Gurmag Angler. Um, and then it's, you know, a dead card against, like, Mono Black. But Mono Black isn't really too popular these days, so I wouldn't really worry. You have one Echoing Decay, and you have, you know, three Forbidden Alchemy, and four Aura Brawls to go find it. It's always good to have a one of, or like a two of this. Moving on to the three, you have Forbidden Alchemy. I'm not a big fan of this card, but the fact that it allows you to cast Gurmag Angler easily, the fact that it can flashback, the fact that it allows you to dig so far into the into your deck and get whatever you may need. I mean, this is kind of like um, the, dragon, the Dragon Control from Standard, right? Because... What it allows you um, to do is you can uh, cast a Gurmag Angler and then just use four counter spells to protect it for four turns and win the game. You know, so that's always fun. Uh, the thing about a Forbidden Alchemy is that it allows you to dig so far. Now, yeah, I hate the fact that you'll have to throw away excess cards. Like, you can get Forbidden Alchemy or you can get, like, you know... Doomblade, Chainer's Edict, and two lands, or you could get the Forbidden Alchemy, where you get, like, you know, Probe, Disfigure, Preordain, a land. You're like, oh, well, crap, I want all these cards. But that isn't going to happen a lot, and you do have more Tree Wire or Soul Manipulation to get back a creature you put into the grave, and you can put other Forbidden Alchemies or Chainer's Edicts into the grave, so there's that. Okay. Next up is Probe. It's not really three mana, actually. It's five mana. That's when you're really going to want to cast it, but... Make sure you cast this card when you know you're not going to get hurt for tapping out. Um, it doesn't really shine in the aggro matchups until later in the game. Uh, but it really shines against the control matchups where making them Mine Rod is pretty good. And unfortunately, you do have to discard two cards, but you do get to draw three. So the Graceful Charity effect for you Yu-Gi-Oh players is pretty good. Then you have Soul Manipulation. Uh, it's either a, you know, Remove Soul or it's a Raise Dead. But, uh, or it can be both, so it's pretty damn good. Then you have Wrath of God and Evercar's Justice. One big gripe I have about this card is that you don't have Pristine Talisman in this deck, but I don't think it's here to buy back very often. I think it's here to just keep the aggro deck uh, from kicking your teeth in, so there's that. Then you have Mole Drifter. I should not have to explain this card, but it is expensive, and this card wants to thrive on lower casting cost spells, so you only play two. And then you have four Grumming Angler, because that is your win condition. So that's the main deck. It's a, a pretty cool take on the deck. In the sideboard, you have 2 and 0 against um, Boggles and Affinity. You have Curfew against Affinity and, I guess, um, any heroic-type strategies you might find. You have Hydro Blast against Red decks. Prohibit, just in case you need some extra counter spells. It's a bit more flexible than Negate um, because it can counter creatures, so there's that. Then you have two Stormbound guys because it's a really good creature against pretty much anything. It's good against Delver because it blocks and then it comes back as a 3-3. It's good against removal heavy decks because of that same reason. So there's that. You have one Thorn of the Black Rose just to be a really, really good uh, control deck against whatever. And then you have um, Vidalian Zombie, which is a real big blast from the past against green decks such like Elves or um, Stompy. Now, you might be thinking, why is this good against Elves or Boggles? Well, against Boggles you can still block, I guess. But they have Trample, right? So... The thing is, is that this gets to get in a return and attack for two. You don't have to, you know, you actually still have to win the game. Um, one thing I think I kind of want in this deck set for is Curse of the Bloody Tome against decks like Boggles, just because where they gain a whole big ton of life, and you, unless you have Curfew or Chainer's Edict, you can't really stop them. But I'm willing to believe that the zombie is actually really good against other matchups that you don't really need it. So that is the deck. Uh, I'm going to take it into a couple test matches and see how it runs. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I will see you soon. Thanks for watching.